Tempo threshold. You've heard it, you've seen it in Strava, you've seen it online, you've seen people doing lactate testing. What does it all mean? Do you need to know? Does, is there even a scientific background to understanding how these systems work? Yes, there is. But how people utilize tempo and threshold within their training and within the bro science almost has nothing to do with the actual physiological breakpoints that they represent within your energetic continuum. So it is the spectrum of energy utilization from all the way to sedentary lying on the couch to Usain Bolt's 100 meter sprint. Right, so how can we use these physiological breakpoints that represent tempo and threshold to train more effectively and more efficiently? Well, I reckon it's pretty easy. Training zones. Training zones are going to be the best method for you and I to pretty much speak the same language. So let me break down the science for you. All right, we actually only have three training zones. Mind-blowing, right? So within the lab, we can only really differentiate between three distinct intensities. That is moderate, heavy, and severe. What do these represent? Moderate is where oxygen or aerobic metabolism is dominant. That's your zone one, zone two. We won't worry about that too much because, you know, you can click mm, th there somewhere around my zone two videos. But as we shift into this heavy intensity domain, things get pretty murky. So how do we measure this? We can use ventilatory threshold, one. Onset blood lactate, otherwise known as lactate threshold, one. But none of these actually represent your threshold, they represent tempo or a transition into anaerobic metabolism. Anaerobic metabolism meaning without oxygen. We can measure it by your lactate increasing from a baseline. Whatever the baseline is, once we see it increase by around uh, a millimole uh, within per liter within your blood, then we know, okay? And when we see your first ventilatory threshold, that's that point, so that's a respiratory point in which that the, we increase the need to blow off CO2. CO2 is generated from the bicarbonate pool, which buffers the acidic hydrogen ions that are generated from anaerobic metabolism. All right, now this is really important because what most people are doing when you're heading out and you're going, yeah, I want to bang out a bit of tempo, you're thinking, I need to feel it. For a lot of you, for a lot of the time, Tempo is not really going to feel much different than your zone two. And this is where many, many, many endurance athletes fall into the trap of gray zone running. Because they might have 30 minutes, 40 minutes, 10k, five miles on their plan. And they think, oh, you know, I'll just push the button a little bit. It feels fine because you're still in a metabolic steady state. So what you're actually doing is generating acidity from anaerobic metabolism. Now that's not the goal of zone two training. Tempo running is just a matter of increasing the load on our muscles and within our metabolic processes in order to become more efficient at buffering low doses of lactic acid or lactate and acidity and the hydrogen ions and also to control our ventilation or oxygen transport. Okay, so it doesn't need to be really hard, but when most people go out, they do tempo, they're doing like 10k half marathon race pace at least this is when we start to push from the heavy to the severe intensities so this is the other end of that middle intensity zone that we can measure we measure this by that lactate threshold too so that is the rapid accumulation of lactate it is the break point from linear and uh, accumulation and we're also you know we're generating that acidity which needs to be buffered by the bicarbonate pool which turns into carbonic acid carbonic acid can then be excreted as water and co2 that increase cause a hyperventilation you know that point as what we call ventilatory threshold two so ventilatory threshold two is that transition from being able to maybe talk like short sentences or a few words to you're gone, you are not, you're not in control. So then, yeah, we don't have, you know, we don't have lactate meters, all right? A couple of you probably do, you can watch one of my other videos, but most of you, you've got a heart rate monitor, you've got your GPS watch, and some, some of you are using power. Regardless, we need to know how can we best 
utilize these technologies to get an insight into what how hard we're working okay we need to do our threshold test my threshold test the basic one that I've been getting feedback on is run hard for 30 minutes. No, you don't need to go all out. 90, 95%, we're gonna get the information we need. We're gonna take a lap at the start, a lap at 10 minutes, and a lap at 20 minutes. That last 20 minutes, we can take the average, we can put that average pace, power, heart rate into my calculator, and we can get our training zones. Okay, wait, Will, why is it only 20 minutes? Why are you only averaging 20 minutes of 30 minutes? I thought lactate threshold was your best one hour pace, power, heart rate. This is part of the confusion. Again, everyone uses something different. So what you're listening to, watching here, is just my, it's my interpretation of the science and my experience working in the lab, being an athlete myself, and working with hundreds of runners over the years. So... You've done that, put it into my calculator, you get the zones. One and two, we know, yeah, aerobic, cool. Okay, so a lot of people are using five zones. I'll say why I use seven. All right, so zones one, two, yeah, three. Three I consider is that marathon intensity, which is like the 88 to 95% of your threshold, the threshold we measured. And that's gonna cover that transitional from moderate to heavy domain all the way up to hopefully or thereabouts that maximal lactate steady state essentially that midpoint within the heavy exercise domain then zone four and this is where i differ from a lot of other zone systems zone four 95 to 100 many five zone systems will go 95 all the way up to 105 the reason i don't do that in prescription and in retrospective analysis is it makes it really tricky so when I'm assigning say 10 minute intensity or I want to really narrow down on a half marathon specific so maybe 30 minutes I want that sub threshold that 95 to 100% zone then we have zone 5 which I use as 100 to 105% of your lactate threshold I want to use that as a zone as a 10k training zone and then retrospectively, we can look and analyze how much time do you spend in zone four and zone five. Then uh, transitioning from zone five onwards, uh, zone six, like we don't need to worry about the VO2 max stuff. It's those three zones, zone three, four, five, where I'm trying to cover two physiological breakpoints in terms of that transition from moderate to heavy and then heavy to severe. Cool, I think I've covered everything. I think that's everything that I need to cover off. If this still sounds like a bit much, one, listen to my podcast, Running With Dr. Will, go watch some more videos. Two, that's three, check out my uh, training plans on my website and my Run Faster With Data course where I do like all of this with downloadable training plans and calculators, roadmaps. Uh, it's like just everything. It's like 10 hours worth of content get that so just check it out running with dr will or drwill.com till next time guys much love